What's going on guys, this video today is going to be my WWE Extreme Rules 2015 review. Of course, Extreme Rules was last night. As always, I'm going to get you guys with my review. Overall, I thought the show was, you know, good. I didn't think it was bad, like a lot of people are saying. I know a lot of people are upset with finishes and whatnot, especially with the main event. But I was, I was satisfied with the show. I didn't really have, you know, big expectations going into it. I never really do, honestly, for pay-per-views. Not because I just don't anymore. It's just because I, I never really have... Unless there's something on the show that I'm really amped for and I'm expecting big things from it. But, you know, it was a good show, so I'm satisfied in the end. So, we had the kickoff, uh, as always, a one-hour kickoff. Uh, we had the match, of course, which I'll get to. We had a backstage uh, thing with, I think they're calling it like the, I, don't, I forget, it's like the something lounge. Like, it's it's been for the past uh, few kickoff events. But uh, it was uh, Tom Phillips, he was accepting, you know, excuse me. Tom Phillips accepting questions uh, from Twitter to ask Kane later on, and then uh, when we got that, Tom Phillips, I, he might have asked a question before, but I know the one question he did ask to Kane, to his face, that somebody tweeted was, are you still relevant? <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious. Kane got mad, uh, looked like he was going to beat up Tom Phillips, but then just left, so we didn't get anything out of that, all them questions for nothing, right? Uh, so that was that, and then uh, it was announced earlier on the day, I think, that, uh, or... Saturday night, but uh, yeah, I think it was Sunday, uh, yesterday throughout the day, that uh, Daniel Bryan was not cleared to compete, so he wouldn't be defending the Intercontinental title against Bad News Barrett at the Extreme Rules event. So what happened was the Tag Team Championship match got moved to the main show. Bad News Barrett went on to face Neville on the kickoff, so he had that match. It was a very good match. Crowd was into it, uh, just you know, very good overall. Neville got the win, which I was I was kind of surprised, not really, but you know, it was good for definitely for him. Uh, and I don't think it hurts Bad News Barrett in any way, so it was good. You know, they teased the red hour near the end where he's going to do it, and then Barrett, you know, fought him off, and then Neville fought him off, and then he hit it. So it was just really good stuff. Neville put out some good high-flying stuff, as always. Just a, a fun way to start the event, So, or at least on the kickoff, that is. So we had that, and then we move on to the main show. First match of the evening, we have Dean Ambrose and Luke Harper in a Chicago street fight. Now, uh, for what it was so far... From the first, let's say, 10 minutes, 15 minutes that the match was, at this point in the show, was, you know, it was good. I was, I was having fun with it. You know, it was just, uh, they were brawling, I believe, they went, you know, just uh, like around ringside. They used, I think, some kendo sticks and some chairs and whatnot. They might have went to the crowd. I don't, you know, they, don't, they, didn't went, they didn't go into the crowd, I don't think. But uh, they end up going into the backstage area, into the, the interview area. Like, they're just brawling all over the place. It ends up... Luke Harper gets in a car, Dean Ambrose jumps through the window, and Luke Harper drives off out of the arena into the streets of Chicago, and that's it. We it, it, The match didn't end because, it's, you know, it can only end in the ring by pinfall submission. It's a, submission, it's a street fight, you know, disqualifications, countouts, they don't matter. So the match still goes on, but supposedly Luke Harper just drove off with Dean Ambrose into the streets of Chicago to continue this brawl elsewhere. So that was it for that part, at least we'll get back to it later. But uh, for this, you know, it was good. I enjoyed it. Move on now. We got the Kiss Me Arse match. Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler. Uh, you know, it was a good match. Sheamus pretty much controlled uh, the majority of it. Uh, these two have definitely had some great matches in the past before. Like No Way Out 2012. Uh, they had a killer match that night. Uh, so we were definitely in for something good here. And I think, you know, it was good. I definitely think they're capable of better. But for what it was, you know, I'm not complaining. Uh, like I said, Sheamus did control most of the match. Ziggler ended up getting the win off like a schoolboy roll-up thing. I know there's like a bunch of different, <coughs> excuse me, uh, names for different kinds of roll-ups and whatnot. But the point is, Sheamus was going for like a suplex, I think. And Ziggler like reversed it into a roll-up, got the pin. Uh, and then we had like, it took about... Five to eight minutes after, they're just beating around the bush with Sheamus not wanting to kiss Dolph Ziggler's arse. And, uh, you know, it takes forever. Ziggler, Sheamus is finally about to do it. He just low blows Dolph and then uh, picks him up, bro kicks him, and then grabs Ziggler's face and makes Ziggler kiss his arse, uh, Sheamus's arse. Even though Ziggler won the match and Sheamus, Sheamus was supposed to kiss Ziggler's arse. That's just funny saying that. Uh, we had the whole aftermath, and Ziggler ended up kissing Sheamus' arse, so that's what happened, uh, and I'm sure we'll definitely get a rematch, uh, either, you know, on a Raw in the coming weeks, maybe tonight, or, uh, you know, definitely a payback, payback's only three weeks away, May 17th, I think, so this feud will definitely continue after this, but, uh, for what it was, like I said, it was a good match, uh, after this, I believe was the WWE Tag Team title match, 
Uh, we had Cesaro and Tyson Kidd with Natalia, of course, defending against A New Day, Big E and Kofi Kingston with Xavier Woods. I swear, anytime there's some kind of more of a, uh, or just a pay-per-view match in general, pay-per-view match or a tag title match for A New Day, it's always Big E and Kofi. Xavier Woods, he gets a shaft every time. It's just funny. Uh, but this match, very good. Off the charts. Match of the night at, up to this point. They were just killing it, man. Big E did the spirit as... The, his spear to the outside to Tyson Kidd. Cesaro went flipping off the... Did like a flip off the uh, ring apron. He, I believe he's going for Big E. And Big E moved. He just crashed and burned on the outside. There's just tons of spots in this. It was just very, very fun. Definitely, if, if you have, haven't watched the show and you want to go check out something, this and the last man standing match that I'll get to, those, those are the two things that you want to go check out. This tag team title match... Best tag team title match in a in a while, and there's ha there's been some good ones lately, mostly because Cesaro and Tyson Kidd, you know, have been carrying it and you know having those tag titles. But Cesaro and Tyson Kidd put on a really good performance uh, along with the New Day, and they're just killing it. Like I said, best tag team title match in a, a long while. Uh, but we come to the near the end of the match. There's a little you know exchange. I think like Cesaro knocked Kofi out of the ring, or uh, some or no Cesaro knocked Biggie out of the ring. Biggie knocked. Tyson Kidd out of the ring, I think, and then Cesaro knocked Big E out of the ring. I think it was something like that. And then Kofi, King Kofi Kingston comes in, rolls up Cesaro. He gets the pin. Kofi Kingston wins it for a new day. Uh, and a new day is the new WWE Tag Team Champions. I don't mind them winning. Uh, I didn't really see them winning here. I was hoping for a longer reign of Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. But I'm sure they'll get a, a rematch down the line, a payback. Hopefully they have to throw in the Lucha Dragons. Make it even better. But, uh... MPTP, those four teams, I think uh, that's like the new, not nothing new, but that should, that a four-way match for the tag team titles like they did at the past two meetings, that's something I want to see, and hopefully we can get that at payback, but a new day with the titles, awesome match. Uh, at this point, they probably showed some kind of vignette in between all this. They cut back to backstage, Renee Young interviewing a new day. As that, that interview's going on, what, what happens? Luke Harper and Dean Ambrose, the pull up back into the arena after about an hour, 50 minutes, something like that goes by. Not an hour, 50 minutes, 50 minutes to an hour, something like that. Luke, they, they drive up, they get out of the car, Luke, Am uh, Luke Ambrose, Luke Harper, it goes up to a new day, he's kind of like, you know, holding on to him like he's trying to get up. Ambrose is on top of the car, he jumps off with a flying elbow, Harper moves, he takes out a new day, then they start brawling, uh, and they go back to the entrance way. Luke Harper went, got out first, Ambrose went another way and came up uh, on the side of Luke Harper, uh, jumped off like some kind of lighting thing, attacked Harper, they went back to the ring, did some stuff, then they both end up throwing a bunch of chairs in the ring, there's probably like 15, 10 to 15 chairs in the ring. They did some stuff, Luke Harper did a power sit down power bomb to Ambrose on a chair, which was nice. Uh, some other stuff in between probably. I'm just forgetting, but uh, it all ends up Dean Ambrose sits the Dirty Deeds to Luke Harper on all these chairs, or I don't even think he hit a chair, but point is he hit a Dirty Deed in the ring and got the pin. Dean Ambrose gets the victory over Luke Harper. So, longest match of the night, went about 50 minutes, I think it said on Wikipedia or something like that, 50 plus minutes. Uh, Ambrose, after an hour into the show, finally gets the win over Luke Harper. Hopefully one day they will release that, you know, Chicago street fight actually streeting, actually fighting in the streets footage, which I, mean, I know I'm just joking by saying that. But, uh, yeah, so Ambrose comes back and wins it in a very long match, I guess you can say, with matches in between. Uh, so we had that, and then I believe after was uh, John Cena and Rusev. I, th I believe it was Cena and Rusev uh, in the Russian chain match for the United States title. I believe, uh, yeah, th that was the order. Uh, Cena and Rusev was next. So, yeah, John Cena and Rusev for the United States title in a Russian chain match. You know, it, it wasn't great. It wasn't spectacular. But, you know, it was good. Uh, you know, the fast lane match was, was really good. WrestleMania was good. And, you know, this was good as well. They didn't use the chain. The way they used the chain, I would have preferred them, you know, kind of beating each other up a little more with the chain instead of just using the chain to pull, you know, the other opponent into something like into the ring post or off the top rope or over the rope or something like that. Uh, there was a point in the match where Rusev was, like, whipping Cena's back with the chain. But, uh, I don't think when he did the accolade Rusev, the one time in the match he put the chain around him, he might have. I'm, I might just be forgetting, but, you know, it, it was good for what it was. Rusev hit, like, two super kicks, t two of his super kicks during the match. Cena hit two AAs during the match. Uh, and then we come to a point 
where it's uh, all both guys have touched all three corners or three corners. It's down to all the lights are on the other corners. One corner's left. Who's got to touch it first? They they both realize they're both tugging on the chain. Rusev goes for it. Cena pulls him back, hits an AA, and tags the the turnbuckle, which completes it, and he gets the win. John Cena retains the United States title. Uh, you know. I was I was glad he won because I want to see these open challenges continue on Raw for at least another couple weeks or so until Payback, which because later in the night, uh, well I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But point is, Cena retains. It was a good match. One thing I do want to say though is every time you know, say Cena touches a corner, Cena touches two corners, Rusev pulls them back and hits a super kick or something, all the the referee would wave it off and there'd only be you know. And the the two turnbuckles that Cena hit would go away at the restart. Wouldn't that make sense if you know Cena hit the AA on Rusev and wouldn't they all go out then, like all of the all of the ones he already hit because they went back to doing stuff. I don't know. Maybe that maybe the referee was just like, oh, they already they both hit three, so I'm just gonna leave them. I don't know. It's I'm not trying to critique it or pick it apart or anything. I'm just saying. But uh, you know, it's not. It wasn't a big deal. I didn't mind it. But, uh, yeah, point is, Cena retains. We had a backstage segment later in the night. Rusev just speaking a bunch of gibberish to Lana. Lana ends up going into the authorities' uh, dressing room, locker room, office, whatever. It's all the same. Uh, and then later in the night, there's a backstage segment. I believe they were interviewing Rusev or something. And Lana walks up and says the final chapter in the Cena-Rusev rivalry will be something like that will be written at Payback, and it will be an I Quit match. So, yes, yeah, Cena, Rusev, 4. We had Fastlane, we had WrestleMania, we had Extreme Rules, and now we're getting Payback. Payback. Uh, at In three weeks, in an I Quit match. Cena and Rusev one more time. Uh, you know, I think Extreme Rules would have been fine to end it off, but I guess Rusev's going to lose again. I wouldn't see Cena quitting. Uh, you know, Cena never quits, obviously. I doubt they're going to make him quit. So, you know... I don't see the point of the match, but or maybe Rusev will get back to get the title back, and that's the point of the match. But point is, we're getting it for the fourth time in three weeks at Payback. You know, it's it's whatever. Uh, I believe after this was the Divas title match. We had Nikki Bella and Naomi. Uh, it's just you know normal Divas match. wasn't anything spectacular. Nikki Bella got the win after some interference from Brie because Naomi attacked Brie earlier on, so Brie got some payback on her. No pun intended with Payback being around the corner. See what I did there. Um, uh, yeah, Brie got involved, Nikki hit the, uh, the rack attack on Naomi, and that was it, Nikki retained, so, you know, not much to talk about, but it was whatever. Uh, now we move on, we got the last man standing match, the big show and Roman Reigns. Now, go back and watch my predictions, I said that something along the lines of this has potential to be a really good match, and I was looking forward to it, and a lot of people were trashing on this match, saying it's going to be the last man awake match, as a joke, but point is, a lot of people were we're trashing this match, and I gave it a chance in my predictions, and I'm glad I did because I was right. These two, Roman Reigns and The Big Show, yes, Roman Reigns and The Big Show, honestly, they might, they probably, I think it's safe to say they had the match of the night. Definitely. I mean, the, you can put this neck and neck with the tag title match, but Roman Reigns and Big Show, they tore it up, and it was, it was awesome. I mean, the spots in it were just, you know, stuff that we either haven't seen or haven't seen in a while. Uh, you know, we had Big Show chokeslam Roman Reigns to the outside of the ring, uh, through two tables, uh, Roman, Big Show went for a spear on Roman Reigns, pretty much Reigns moved and Big Show went diving through a table, uh, what's some other stuff in this that before I get to the final, you know, spot, uh, I'm trying to think, but can't really think of anything else, but there was other stuff that this match, that really made this match, but we get near the end, uh, earlier on Big Show set up the steel steps to the end like, here's the Spanish announce table. Here's the, the the English announce table, or the regular announce table, I guess. Big Show set up the seal steps next to the regular announce table. And then Big Show started clearing all that, all, you know, all the stuff off the announce tables and whatnot. Point is, this ends up, Big Show's on the regular announce table. I think he, like, knocked Roman Reigns off. Roman Reigns ends up running up the steps, running on the regular announce table, spearing Big Show off into the Spanish announce table, Sick, awesome spot there. It's to totally just, you know, something we haven't seen since I think Batista and Undertaker at, uh, I I'm pretty sure they did the spot at, like, Backlash 07, or maybe they did the Mania match. But point is, something we haven't seen in a while. It's just very sick, you know. It's really, 
Roman Reigns, even though you know he's not the best guy, I don't need to, I don't need to spend any time with saying why he's not. But you know his pay per view matches, you know this year have been real good stuff. I mean, obviously the Rumble's the Rumble, so you know it's how great is it really going to be for one guy? You know what I mean? Even though he won, but the point is it's just like it's the Rumble. But all the other matches, you know, against Dana Bryan, best match of his career without a doubt. Against Lesnar, Lesnar beat him up. It was, Roman Reigns got some stuff in. The point is the match was awesome. And this match, match of the night for Extreme Rules, so can't get any better than that. But get, getting back to the actual match here. So Reigns spears Big Show into the Spanish announce table. Big Show ends up getting up, but then he just like falls back down. I don't know why. He just, he literally got up and then just like slowly fell back down. If Reigns Reign should have hit like a Superman punch or something on him, but it's whatever. Reigns ends up grabbing the regular announce table and just dumps it on top of Big Show, stands on top of it as Big Show is crushed under the table, gets the gets the 10 count, uh, Big Show loses, Roman Reigns is the last man standing. Match of the night, like I said, no more no more words to uh, talk, to explain, just self, not self-explanatory, if you watch the mouth, match it's self-explanatory, the point is, Roman Reigns defeats Big Show, last man standing, match of the night. Moving on to the main event, we have the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match, uh, Seth Rollins defends against Randy Orton inside a steel cage with Kane as the guardian of the gate. Uh, the match, you know, it wasn't it wasn't the best match in the world. You know, it, it was just it was like whatever. They did have some, uh, you know, the uh, what, what am I trying to say? The match did pick up near like the last. Uh, if saying that, say the match is like twenty minutes, so they probably picked it up near the, the last like ten. You know, the, the first ten minutes, I'll say. It was kind of slow, they were doing stuff, but it was still kind of slow. And then, you know, they ended up doing like a suplex where Rollins was trying to get out of the cage. Orton grabbed them, did like a suplex back into the ring. There were some other spots in this where Rollins was like on the cage, came off, Orton got him with a, with his suplex thing, I don't know, whatever, side suplex, I don't know what it's called. Uh, and they did some other stuff, and uh, you know, it was a good match. And then, uh, I forget how, I think Seth Rollins... Went to leave the cage, so Kane opens up the Kane opens up the uh, the door. I think Orton might have went after him, or the, or or this is reversed. Like Orton went to open up the cage, and Rollins went after him. But point is, if this ends up, I think Rollins was the one who goes out the cage, and Orton goes after him. I think so. That's what it is. Point is, this ends up Orton and Rollins are tugging at each other. You know, Rollins trying to get out, Orton's trying to hold him in and get out at the same time. They're both near the door. Kane ends up. Uh, well, I should. Rewind a little bit. First off, Rollins did something earlier on where he tried doing something for Orton. I think he like tried doing a drop kick to Orton. Orton moved, and Rollins ended up hitting the cage and knocking it into Kane's face. And then the door was open, and that's when that's what led to Rollins trying to get out. And then what I was talking about earlier. All right, fast forward to what I was talking about. So these two are going at it. Kane gets up, slams the door in both of Rollins and Orton's face. He ends up getting in the ring. James gets security getting in there. Kane choke slams both of them. Kane is, you know, looking at Rollins like he's going to do something. Ends up choking Randy Orton. Hits him with a choke slam. Ends up choke slamming Seth Rollins. He puts Rollins' arm over Orton like he did uh, in that match a few weeks ago when it was Kane and Rollins. Orton ends up kicking out. Kane gets pissed. He comes back, tries hitting a tombstone on Orton. Orton gets out of it, hits an RKO, which I forgot to mention the RKO was banned during this match. Hits an RKO on Kane. Orton turns around. Seth Rollins hits an RKO on Randy Orton and gets the or doesn't get the pin. He escapes the cage. Seth Rollins retains the WWE World Title. That's that. Now everyone seems to be complaining because oh the RKO was banned, so and you know Orton used it on. Kane, so the match should have been over right should have been over right there. But then again, it was banned, so that means nobody can use it. So Rollins shouldn't have used it either. There's all this stuff going on, people, and that's why people are complaining because I guess they're confused. I don't know, but that's probably why WWE did it to plant the seeds for I don't know maybe payback that's in three weeks. So you know the ending I, I liked. Rollins hit a sweet RKO. I didn't mind that Orton uh, hit the RKO with Kane. Kane wasn't in the match, involved in the, well he wasn't involved in the match. He wasn't actually in the match. So it's not, it kind of is Orton breaking the rules, like he wasn't supposed to use the RKO, but then again, it kind of isn't, because Kane wasn't even in the match. Then again, Seth Rollins said the RKO was banned. He didn't say specifically just for Randy Orton the RKO was banned. He just said the RKO was banned in general, so he shouldn't have used it. That's what WWE probably wants, is everybody questioning it, so 
you know, questioning what happened in the main event. And, you know, the commentators were even talking about it after. That was the discussion as the pay-per-view went off the air. So definitely planting seeds what this, this whole thing was for, you know, payback in a few weeks or, you know, more stuff months from now. One thing I do want to mention is during the match, Orton hit a pedigree on Seth Rollins and it was very cool. I don't know. I, don't, I just, I popped for that for some reason when I was watching it. Maybe that one, maybe we'll get a Randy Orton versus Triple H match down the line. I don't know. But point is, overall Extreme Rules, it was a good show. Definitely, if you didn't check this show out, make sure you go check out the tag title match and the last man standing match. If you want to check everything out, you know, go ahead. It was, it was a good show, like I said. Uh, Ambrose and Luke Harper, you know, it was good. Uh, Neville and Barrett on the kickoff was good. Uh, what was the second match? Sheamus and Ziggler was good. Uh, obviously, the tag title match, like I said, second best match of the night. I'll give that second best match and last man standing first match of the night. Uh, Cena and Rusev, you know, it was, it was good. Divas match was, of course, whatever. And then last man standing match of the night. Orton and Rollins, it was good. So everything was good on this show, honestly, at least in my opinion. So there's my Extreme Rules review. I'm going to make a quick video after this. Or it might not be quick. I don't know. We'll see. You'll see when the video is uploaded. But thank you guys for checking this out, and I'll see you guys in the next video.